Hi everyone and welcome to the Lady Leadership Show. I'm super excited to have Kim Foley join me today on the show. Now Kim is an award-winning TV producer, she's a media trainer, she's a television stylist and she's recently written a new book as well which we'll get into today. Welcome Kim. Thank you, thanks, good to be here. Now we're going to talk about virtual meetings. I think no one ever, when we started out 2020, realised that we were going to spend our life on Zoom or Teams or, you know, any of those. And so, Kim, you put your skills to, to the test, and you've recently written a book on what to do in virtual meetings. I did um, virtual meetings with power and presence. Yeah, it just came out on Amazon. I'm thrilled. Uh, I, I worked really hard on it, but I realized at the very beginning of this whole virtual meeting uh, extravaganza in April, March, that people really were struggling and they really didn't know how to make themselves look credible like they would in a real meeting if they were face to face. And with that struggle, I, it, it, you know, it occurred to me that it, there's, it's really no different than going on video. It's the same thing. So the same rules apply. If you, but since most people aren't television producers or television stylists, they don't know all the little nuances that really contribute to helping your credibility be really powerful on these meetings. And so I thought, well, why don't I gather them all up and uh, put them in a book and make it easy for people to, uh, you know, to get it right. Yeah, and so let's get into it. How, how can we get it right? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you know, that is not a five-minute conversation, but, <laughs> but we have time, so we're going we're gonna to break it all down and discuss all the different things that you can do that are going to help people really engage with you better, because that's the point. The point is, you know, we want people to, to really stay with you if you're doing any kind of Zoom meeting. We want engagement. We want people to feel comfortable. We want them to want to talk to you. And, you know, truly, my consultations and my book is really intended for people who are doing business, because friends and family will love you no matter what. Let's face it, right? I mean, you can do it. It doesn't matter what you're doing with friends and family. But if you've got any type of business that you're doing, whether you're inspiring people, informing them, selling to them, whatever it is that you're doing, making presentations, you need to look credible. Now, how many people, I don't know about your dinner table, but when you were growing up and you were young, did your family ever said, you know, let me teach you about credibility? Did, did you ever even hear that word out of your parents' no. mouth? No, 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 no. Nobody, nobody's really taught that. You know, it, it, it's sort of something you get by osmosis as you get older. If you're self-aware, you learn that there's something that gives you trustability, you know, that people will, will believe in you and trust in you. Um, if you look a certain way, if you act a certain way, people will believe you, right? That's what credibility is. And so in the workplace, people are summing you up all the time based on your body language and your image and the content of the words that come out of your mouth and your work performance. All of these things play a part in your credibility. And so once you go onto a video screen, now you've got to still get all those things right. And people really don't know how to do it because, you know, all the research shows that there's several reasons why people hate virtual meetings. I wonder if you can guess what one of them might be. Any idea? Yeah, look, how, how you look on screen would be. Yeah, that's, that's the main one. People say, I don't like how I look on camera. Okay, that's one of the main ones. And, you know, I say, hmm, let's think about that for a minute. Do you not like what you've created? Do you not like what you've played a part in creating? Or do you just really hate all photos and pictures of yourself? Or do you just not like how this platform shows you? It really doesn't look like what it looks like in the mirror now, does it? It looks different. And so why is that? Well, that's because you don't have the same lighting as you do in your bathroom or your, your, your bedroom mirror, you know, you, the lighting's different. Your, it, the camera lens is looking you, at you differently than the mirror. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, that play a role here. So my job is to help you fall in love with what you see on the screen. And I want you to be a co-creator in that. And we will do that as we go through the steps in this, this talk today. Um, but I really want to get people past that moment of not liking how they look on camera. Everyone should love how they look on camera. That's part of being excited and dynamic and, and, and truly um, having other people want to talk to you yeah. is to 
exude that confidence that you have. You know how it is if you're going to a really interesting meeting before COVID. And you'd look in the mirror before you'd go out the door or before you would leave your office to go into a conference room. And you'd say, yeah, I'm rocking this. I got this today, right? Well, if the same thing's got to happen for this venue. We want you to look into that lens and go, yeah, I got this. This is, this is great. And um, so we can get you there. And those will be my television stylist skills that we're going to use for that and a little bit of video producing skills. But there's another reason why people don't like this, this venue, and that is because they don't like having people peek into their home. Oh, yeah. They either have a messy background and they can't change that because they have kids or they have, you know, a space that can't be moved. Or maybe they have a really nice art collection and they don't want anybody to see it. <laughs> So, you know what I mean, there's all kinds of reasons. There's all kinds of reasons why people want to have privacy in their home. And so this, this um, really can sabotage that. So, uh, you know, that we want to help alleviate all those problems. And that's my job. My job is to fix it all. Uh, so we will, we're going to start talking about the very first chapter of my book is the most important thing you can do when you're on these meetings, which is get your internet connection really solid. Because if you don't do that, you're going to have freezing and you're going to have odd sounds and you're going to disrupt the meeting and people aren't going to stay connected and engaged. So we want everyone to have really strong internet connection. And the engineers tell me that the best way to do that is to maximize the speed of your internet connection. Well, how do you do that? You do that a couple of ways. The first one, and everyone should write this down, the very first one is to reboot your router. Your router is that thing that might be in your basement or in another room with all the little wires coming out of it. It's plugged into the wall. And some people call it a modem, a modem router. You, what you want to do is periodically go down and pull the cord that is the power cord out of the back, or you can unplug it from the wall, that's fine too, and wait 10 seconds and plug it back in. And what that's gonna do 90% of the time is completely fix any kind of internet connection your problem you're having. Because once you reboot that, your internet speed for some reason soars. So that's a really important thing to do. And I would suggest with all the streaming that people are doing now is to do it every few weeks, to just go down and reboot that, pull it out for 10 seconds, push it back in, and you're gonna be good to go. The other thing they tell me that people don't do is they don't close out the other apps on their computer. So you need to shut down all the other things running in the background so that you can give all that speed to your streaming. And that's because video uses a, you know, a lot of bandwidth. So it's really important to do that. So these are the first two things that you need to do before you start any meeting is close out all your other things. If you haven't shut your computer down in a while, you should start shutting it down completely every night and then opening it in the morning and you have a nice fresh slate to start with because it clears your RAM when you do that and that gives you better speed. So there, really important info there. First chapter of the book for a very good reason. Uh, look, the next thing, yeah. yeah. So, have you how how often do you shut your computer down? Uh, Kim, I probably haven't shared. I've spent thirty years working in IT, so um, oh. <laughs> and been a CIO for the last ten years, so I shut mine down regularly. So, so you know the value of this, but most people yeah, don't. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they don't. They have, and people tell me they haven't shut their computer off completely for a month. Yeah, and that's just I've, that's yeah, horrendous. I've, I've seen people who haven't shut their computer off for years, and then they've really yeah, that's it's crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy talk. <laughs> so, the next thing we want to do is we want to get your framing right. So we see a lot of people that log on, and you're seeing their chin, and you're seeing the ceiling, or the ceiling fan, or the light in the background. And what we need to do is get that computer camera up at eye level. And I don't mean kind of eye level. I mean really eye level. And that's super important to get at eye level. And yes, is it awkward then to use the keyboard? Yes, it is. So what? You'll, you'll adjust. The important thing is, is that people really kind of sense that you're sitting across the table from them. That's what we're trying to simulate. We're trying to simulate really being in the same room, sitting across the table, having a conversation. 
And it cannot work if your angle, if your computer's low and it's angled up and you're seeing the ceiling and, you know, so, so let's get your computer up on some boxes or anything you have around and get it eye, truly eye level. So that's the second thing. And, that, and you've done a good job with that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And look, I've got mine sitting on a crate, like an upturned yeah. kind of document holder thing that you yeah. would, yeah. And like yeah. the keyboard is in an awkward position, but you know. Yeah, it it's really, really important. And then the next thing you must do is you have to give these tiny little processors, these little, these little video cameras have tiny little processors in them. They're not a big DSLR camera that can work well in low light. They need a tremendous amount of light in order to see the detail and to really make you look fantastic. So it's really important to get a lot of light on your face. And how do you do that? You either have to be facing a window or you have to be facing a light. So if you have a lamp or a, or a desk lamp or a table lamp or a pole lamp, anything at all, you put it behind your computer so that it's shining on your face. And this way, you're really gonna have some beautiful light on your face. And it's gonna pick up the detail. You're not gonna look like you have dark shadows. It's gonna just make you look so much better. That's the key. Now, now, your light is quite white and mine looks a bit more yellow. So do you think white light is better? Or do you think that's I think, it's, my... I think, I think it, yeah, I think it's a matter of choice. I actually have daylight uh, bulbs in, in my lamps here. So that's why mine looks more white because I just prefer that look. Yours is more incandescent, which has a little amber or golden glow to it. That's fine. The, I, the important thing is that you have the light on your face. And so we could get even a little bit more light on your face. Um, using a little tiny desk lamp like this behind yeah. your, your, your camera is a great way to get some light on your face just a little desk lamp you don't have to buy anything expensive and fancy even a table lamp you can even take the shade off and it will put more light on your face by taking the shade off of it so there's so many tricks of the trade now and that I being said opened another window because i'd shut it the other day because the sun was shining on my face i'm in a room with windows in front of me and windows on the side and <laughs> So that's a little bit lighter now. Right. That one as well. Yeah. So light on the face, critical, critical. You can't have too much light. It's almost so much light that it kind of bothers my eyes a little bit, and that's what makes it look so good. Yeah. Um, light now, light. if you've given, if you wear glasses, yes, and you've given yourself the amount of light that you need, you're going to have a lot of reflection in the glasses. Mm. And so, what we want to do is cut that reflection out because. You know, when people look at you, they want to look into your eyes. And if you have a big reflection there and they can't see your eyeballs, well, that defeats the purpose that we're trying to do. We're trying to connect. So there's a little trick we do. All the television stylists do this to all the on-air personalities that wear glasses and all the actors and all the scenes you've seen where anybody has glasses on. This is what they do. So if you put them flat on, you're going to have a lot of reflection. You can see that. And if you tilt them so that the side that usually is sitting on your ear is now angled up an inch above your ear. Now they're still pushed all the way up, but they're tilted oh, forward. I know. And by tilting them forward, they feel really weird, but you can still see fine out of them yeah, and it yeah. completely gets rid of the, of the, of the reflection. Oh, yeah. So super important tip there is to you tilt them up. This before you went on camera, you wouldn't bother otherwise. Pardon me? Yes, you would do that before you, you do everything you need to do, fix your hair, fix your framing, everything. For instance, I want people to take up the whole frame, okay? Take up the whole frame. I've got so many videos on LinkedIn and YouTube where people can see how I'm framed. I want people to realize that your head should be at the top of the frame. It shouldn't be in the middle of the frame. It should yeah. be at the top. Yeah. And you've done a good job of that. So you want to fill the frame. You also don't want to be sitting so close that you look like a bobblehead. You don't want to just do a, a shoulders up shot. I stand back a foot and a half away from my uh, computer and that way I can have my body language. And I always stand in these meetings. I yeah. never sit. Well, I never sit. I yeah, stand I did, all day long. I did notice and, that you were standing and I'm yes. wondering, 
Is that to stop you kind of from slumping a bit or? No, it's because I'm, the, the truth of the matter is I feel better at the end of the day if I've, st if I've been standing versus sitting because then I kind of get a backache because I'm locked into position for so long and because I'm doing consult consultations all day long. And so, you know, by standing, I also can be more dynamic because I can shift my weight, I can move around, I can back up a little bit and use my body language and my hands. And therefore people get much more excited and they're much more engaged. When you're locked down to a seat, it's really hard to use your body language. You've got to have to really practice moving your head a lot and your shoulders and your hands to get that body language in there. Because in a real meeting, we are using our body language to communicate with people and that's really important. It also, it turns out, it changes the tone of your voice when you use body language. So we want to be able to do that. So I suggest people stand in their meetings and if they don't want to, fine, but to try to think about incorporating some body language into what they're doing. Back it up, back that chair up so that you're a little further away so people can see more of your body. And don't be afraid to move your shoulders and your head and, and, and really you know, capture people's attention with your body language. Very, very important. Yeah, and I can definitely feel that with yourself today. And I, and I've, and I think the thing is when you are presenting, it's quite, you don't norm, you got, you're not getting that feedback that you normally get with people in front of you. So how do you create that energy and that dynamic? Yeah you know, be dynamic. And so, yeah, I think that's a really great tip and better for you to stand up as well. And see, I'm being a bit oh, more animated now with my body language because I'm sat down. So, and I did, yeah. I did do some, um, I did play around with standing up as well. So I have been, sta I've been standing up and sitting down and I, yeah, I just haven't quite worked it out, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can, you know, the way I have it, I can do it either way. I can sit or I can stand, but I really, at the end of the day, prefer standing. And, um, you know, I'm doing a lot of cons consultations with people who do a lot of presentations or maybe they even speak at conferences or they present for their company or they're doing sales presentations to clients. And it's very helpful for me to be able to really help them, you know, look better than the competitor, so to speak, you know, to really look dynamic and to really be able to capture the attention of the potential client or whoever it is they're trying to convince of something. So. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all these are presentation skills that, that I try to weave in. Um, so it's about, you know, not only how you look, but how you interact on this medium. And so um, that's basically presentation skills or media training. Yeah. And um, yeah. So we've talked about framing and we've talked about lighting. Um, let's talk a little bit about what you should wear because people don't think about that so much and yeah. they've gotten kind of sloppy and That's, they've gotten kind of, yeah, people got, have gotten very comfortable. <laughs> and I was so gonna, I was going to ask you about this and I was going to say, do you think people have got a bit, have gotten a bit sloppy and, um, Yes, yeah. I do think they have. And I know they have. And, you know, you've got to remember your leaders, those of you that are leaders in your company, you need, you set the tone. So you're going to have to dress up more than other people. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> you know, you only have to do it waist up. Um, I've got my tennis gear on from my waist down, but I've got a jacket on and a nice sweater. And, you know, try, you know, the jacket is the symbol of authority. And so wearing a jacket in the workplace, now it depends on what, you know, what you do for a living and what type of industry you're in. There's different dress codes for different industries, but don't be wearing a hoodie, you know, <laughs> don't wear a turtleneck sweater. It makes you look like a soccer mom. You know, I want you to look like the expert that you are. Yeah. And that's a really important thing, you know, my, to think about. Husband, because, yeah. My husband's always had a, dre a, a saying dress for the job that you want, not the job that you've got. And, and that's true. That's true. That's a really good thing to remember because you know, think about this for just for a minute. People give away their power all the time, every single day, whether it's a real live meeting or a virtual meeting, they give their power away. You have tremendous power if you learn how to harness, you know, bringing your personal best to this medium and realize that your clothing is simply a tool. It's just a tool. You don't, it doesn't have to be a personal statement about what you like or don't like. It's a tool to help people believe in what you're saying and to help them buy into what you're saying and trust you. So look at your clothing choices like that. So what you wanna do is avoid tiny prints 
uh, tiny stripes, anything that's busy that the video camera cannot read. You want to um, try to stick to solids if possible and try to stick to some bright colors. When I wear red or royal blue or emerald green, and you'll see in all my videos that are on YouTube and on my website and everywhere that I'm wearing these bright solid color jackets and people actually comment and say, oh yeah, you're the woman in the blue jacket or, <laughs> you know, there's, there's, you know, the research shows in video that our brains light up in a different place when we wear color. Wow. And color helps people remember the information. They remember you because of the color. So I would say, you know, get some jewel tones, get some mid-tone colors, avoid black, avoid gray, avoid uh, neutral tones, and go with a nice bright color. And you will really love the results of that. It's a very, very powerful tool. Good advice. And by the way, the jacket, you know, I don't know if our viewers are, are, are being able to just hear or see this, but the jacket you have on today, I own that same jacket and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny to me to and see I that wonder, jacket on I you. I think the stripe is thick enough for the camera. It's, yeah, it's a wide enough stripe. Yeah. yeah. So it is. And so time. you have a, a beige or a brownish background. What we want to do is make sure that we don't blend into the background. Okay. We want to stand out from the background. So by wearing a mid-tone color and not a neutral or beige or brown or, you know, something that just blends in, you will really pop. And that's why when I'm doing all my videos, I'm always wearing a bright color. So it really draws your eye to the individual really important tip for people to remember. The next thing is your skin's going to be shiny. If you've given yourself enough light, your skin's going to look shiny. And that's a healthy sign of healthy skin, right? That you've got oils in your skin. That's good for skin. Except on camera, what people think is that you're nervous, that you're sweating and you're nervous. We don't want that. So if you wear powder, put extra powder on when you're going to do these virtual meetings. I keep my powder right here next to my computer and I add extra powder right before I go on. And if you're a guy, you can, um, you can also wear powder. I put powder on every single man on television, you know, from our, <laughs> from presidents on down through sports figures, you know, anybody you see on camera has powder on. Powder on and right. there's a reason for that. It's a credibility issue. And so there are clear powders that you can buy. I actually talk about the one I use for people on camera in my book and, um, there's a website called um, rogerriggle.com, R-I-G-G-L-E, rogerriggle.com. And he has a blot powder that is for men and women. And it's clear. It doesn't have any color to it. So you don't see it. Yeah. It just disappears. But it totally cuts the shine. And so it's a, it's a fantastic product. And you can't buy it in stores. And so, um, I mean, different brands make different products, but this is very reasonable. So I, anyway, I, I like that particular product and it's not something anybody would come across. Um, you kind of, you know, would have to be a makeup artist to know about it, right. but, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, do you think men are going to go and do you think men are worried? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Many, 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 many men have, you know, almost all of my clients have bought this and use it. They really like how they look with it because nobody wants to look shiny. Let's face it. Nobody wants to look foolish, you yeah. know, on camera. Yeah. And so people want to look good. And it, this isn't, you know, male or female or, you know, it's just, it's just a tool to get rid of the shine. That's and all it is. Back because around that credibility piece, how to become, how to come yeah. across more credible. Right, exactly. I want people to walk into the closets in the morning before they start their day and think, what's the most credible thing I can put on to make me look like the expert that I am? Yeah. And I want you to not be afraid to look more dressed up than the other person. Don't, that's, you don't judge yourself based on what other people do. You bring your personal best to the table. That's the important thing. And people aren't doing that because, oh, they're afraid somebody will think that they're too dressed up or I'm trying too hard or, or whatever. That's not going to serve you well. Right. Don't worry about that. It's, it's interesting because I think, like you said, you know, people have got a bit sloppy. And I think sometimes, you know, if you want to fit in, then you might decide to start wearing your hoodie. But, um, yeah, not, not necessarily the thing to do. No, let's talk about sound a little bit too. Um, if you're standing back the way I am, uh, 
the computer speakers are not going to capture you. They're not going to work well and you're going to sound tinny and it's not going to sound good. So I highly suggest that people either use a microphone. I have on a, a lavalier microphone that's, you know, clipped to, to my jacket and it's a USB connection into my computer. It's $15, $18, something like that. Very reasonable. It makes a total difference. Do not wear the headsets where you have the the cords hanging down on your, you know, on yourself. Don't, don't do that. That, that's something you do for friends and family. It's not for professional. Yeah. You want to do something more professional. My, my desk, yeah. So. Right. Well, most people can't use a big mic because it gets in the way of their computer, you yeah. know, when they're trying to have yeah. these meetings, but for podcasting, that's, that's different. Um, the other thing I really like are these mono headsets that are just one eared so that you don't, they don't really, they're not heavy. They don't take over. You put them on. The microphone now is right next to your mouth. And um, I really love the cordless little um, headsets that have one ear covered. Um, and you can buy, you know, them as low as $39 on Amazon. This was one by Willful. Wow. And there's other companies that make them in yeah. that uh, vein. Just, the only thing I don't like about this is that you have to charge it. <laughs> and sometimes I forget to charge it. And that's why I like my USB mic. I can always plug it in and know that I'm going to get great sound. Yeah. Um, I feel a little yeah. bit like you look like you're in a call center with the other one on as well. Well, yeah, that's, a, that's okay. It, it's pretty hidden. It's, it's yeah. you know, with the, one, with the one ear, it's pretty, pretty yeah. hidden. But, um, you know, people have to use different things depending on the noise level in their house because some people have noisy children in the background or, um, you know, dogs barking. And we want that microphone to your, close to your mouth mm -hmm. if you have a noisy household. Yeah. And uh, we want you to shut the door and try to, you know, keep your space as quiet as possible for your meetings. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's very hard to control. We had a a three month, a uh, three month old, a nine month old here for three months, and uh, my my grandson. And and at the beginning of COVID, it was really difficult for people to have a quiet Zoom meeting because um, you know you're passing him from person to person, and who's in the most important meeting? You know, <laughs> but that person doesn't get the baby. So it's tricky. You know, it's tricky. We're all doing our best. We're all doing our best. But the problem is, all these tips that I've talked about, the framing, getting getting the camera eye level, getting more lighting on your face, all of these things, the internet connection, these are things that people haven't had time to stop and really fix and think about because they didn't really have the guidance. And honestly, people were just trying to learn the technology of the platform. I mean, before COVID, I had never done a virtual meeting. I've done millions of videos, but I've never done a virtual meeting. So I didn't know the platform, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people were, were in the same boat that I was in. You had to learn the platform. So they were so busy doing that, they didn't stop to think about, well, how can this be better? Yeah, that's right. And I, how, can I, how can I like what I see more, you know? Yeah. And that's really yeah. important. Because, yeah, they, like you said, they're, they're looking a bit weird or you're looking up their nose or, yeah. I, look, I often put on the camera first and frame, like I'll just set up a meeting Smart. Where just look at how I look and then go okay because I am recording this and it could go on YouTube as well so yeah. yes yes well that's really smart because um, by framing yourself to begin with you can make little adjustments like pulling the screen forward like I'm going to do right now to just get rid of some of the headroom there you go you just pull yeah. it forward and it gets rid of the headroom so these are our little tricks that you can try now and hopefully I've given people um, some things to to think about and to try. Um, I, you know, I want people to really excel in this new time of virtual meetings and people are struggling and I want to make it easier. That was the point of the book. Yeah. yeah. And do you think men or women should do anything differently or do you think it's just the same for both? No, I think they both need to pay attention to their framing and their lighting and, um, and their body language. I mean, let me teach you a little bit about what you can start looking for in people's body language. For instance, when you're doing a Zoom meeting and you are doing the talking, you're doing the presenting, you should never be looking at your screen. You should always be looking into the eye of the camera. Mm -hmm. And where is that little camera? It's that little dot at the top. But we forget because we are so hardwired 
to look at faces that we tend to look at the face instead of the camera. But if you're doing the talking, you want the viewer to feel that you're looking at them. And they're not going to feel that way if you're looking at either yourself or their face on the screen. So what I tell people to do is take a little piece of paper that's colored and tape it behind where that camera is on your computer so that you're drawn to look at it. And that's your little reminder that I'm going to look there. And um, that's going to really help people remember where to look. It's a very important piece of body language. Absolutely. The other thing that you want to do, pardon me? No, no, I was just going to say, absolutely. That's a, that's an awesome tip because you are, you are distracted. You know, it is a big screen. You are looking at say, you know, the audience or you are looking Maybe you've got notes or whatever. And so it is a bit right. of yeah. Right. I mean, you can look away to check people out to make sure their body language, that they're still with you and whatnot. But, you know, overall, if you're doing the speaking, you want to be looking into the eye of the camera. And then once you're done speaking, you can look wherever you want. But, it, you know, whoever is speaking needs to look there. And that's really, really important. Mm. There's so many little tips with body language that count. For instance, I was in a meeting this week with someone who, you know, a lot of times companies hire me to train teams of people. You know, they'll do the sales team or the marketing team or whatever, and we'll do them individually. And this woman evidently didn't want to do the training. And when we logged on to the meeting, she was like this sideways, okay? So she was sitting sideways and just sort of looking at me out of the you know, corner of her eye, telling me, screaming, broadcasting to me that she did not want to be in this meeting. And I knew that's what that body language meant. I mean, if you think about it, when you interact with a child or a spouse or a loved one, and you don't want to hear what they're saying, the first thing you do is you turn your body away. You look away and you turn your body away from them. That's what we do when we don't want to hear what people are saying. And so watch for that. Because if you're trying to convince people of something or you're trying to sell something to someone and you can see that they're turning away, you're losing them and I want you to get them back. You can turn it around, right? So, um, you know, I worked with her, I got her laughing, you know, and making some real time changes. And, you know, she eventually straightened, straightened up. We want our belly button aligned with that screen. We wanna be straight on to the camera. That's the most powerful stance you have. And the other thing you wanna do with body language is you don't wanna lean forward like this because that distorts you. Because these are wide angle lenses, and so we don't want the head to look bigger than the rest of the body. We want to be straight up and down. So if you're sitting, all you have to remember is that your shoulders have to be aligned above your hips. You're not leaning back like this, and you're not leaning forward like this. You're straight up and down if you're sitting. The, that is the most powerful stance you can have, is straight up and down. So these body language clues will help you look at whoever you're talking to and figure out where their mindset is. Mm -hmm. If they're, if they're doing this and they're tired, if they're just keep fidgeting and they're losing, they're losing their patience, they're losing their concentration. You got to change something up. You're going to have to get more dynamic with your voice. You're going to have to stand up, use more body language. You can turn things around in a meeting. If you're reading their body language, you can see you're losing people. The people are in a lot of boring meetings, let's face it. And so we need to figure out some ways to make this easier for people. And I say to business owners all the time, don't have a video meeting if you can have a phone call. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah. Don't make everything a video meeting. Now, we do need to check in with our teams and we do need to read the body language and read if people are having a hard time or not. We need to, you know, we need to know. But yeah. don't make everything a virtual video meeting do some phone calls I think that, that it just wears people out yeah I mean, that's right that kind of constant on piece do you think um so sometimes women struggle to be heard in you know meetings face-to-face -face meetings what do you do you think what do you recommend for women then on say if it's a group you know zoom meeting etc yes well, I recommend highly that they seriously these tips to heart and do it. Wear a bright color, wear a jacket, 
Um, I recommend that they don't get too close to the camera, that they back up, maybe even stand up so that they can shift and whatnot. You yeah. want to keep your eyes in a meeting um, on, the you know, on the screen and on the camera lens because you don't want to look like you're working on your phone. You can tell when people are doing other things and they're very distracted. There's a lot of etiquette involved in these virtual meetings that people have never thought about. Yeah. Um, if, if people go to my website, actually, there's a free download called um, Etiquette and Protocol for Meetings. And I, it's, it's free. You know, I wrote this up for companies because they were struggling with figuring out, well, how do we tell people how we want them to act? Nobody ever thought of this before. And so it's a, it's a free download for people. And it's fantastic because um, it talks about the person who might be moderating and their etiquette. It also talks about people who are attending meetings. The participants and what etiquette is like for instance you should never be eating on one of these meetings yeah. um, if you have to get up to go to the bathroom answer the door deal with a child or a pet or something turn your video off and then get up and go just don't leave the screen because now everybody's going well where'd they go but where are they <laughs> and it's very distracting what is, what so is, we've all seen we've yeah. all seen that happen yeah. What about screen on, screen off? Do you, you think it's okay, you know, because that's the thing where everyone's in their homes and people are being disturbed, etc. So, should are you asking me, should they turn their screen off for meetings? Well, should the, should the protocol be have your screen on, you know, 90% of the time and if you are being distracted, then have it off? I think we've all come across those people that just never have their screen on, so... Oh, well, you know, different companies want different things, but sometimes they're afraid to, to say it. But people, your, your um, superiors, your, you know, bosses want to see you on screen because they want to see how you're doing. They want to interact with you. They want to really connect and engage with you. So we want to encourage our people to get on screen if they're on video. It's not necessary for every single meeting. So pick and choose when you say this is an all video meeting for everyone wow. and tell people that you want them on screen. And, um, you know, I, I don't think everybody has to be on screen all the time, but if there's one person that's constantly off screen and everybody else is on screen, I think that's a private phone call to that person to find out what's going on because you know, it's not that you have to demand they go on, you have to listen to them and you have to figure out, well, is it because they have a background that they're embarrassed of or do they have um, too much going on in the background with people walking around and they can't do it in any other place? I mean, there's all kinds of reasons. Yeah. It could be that they really don't like the way they look on camera and they don't know how to fix it to look better. Um, there's so many different reasons that people could be turning off their video and, you know, it, using the video is really important because, again, we're trying to simulate going to work and seeing each other and talking across the table with each other. We can tell so much about people through just watching their body language. It's not just about what they say. So if you want an engaged employee, the video should be on most of the time, but it doesn't have to, you know, you can say this is just a, a phone call meeting. You know, we might do it by Zoom, but everybody can have cameras off. Or you can say this meeting, I want cameras on. And you get to decide as the person calling the meeting how it's going to go. And, and that's really important. You are, and like you said, you are wanting to create that engagement and connection as well. Exactly. Now, exactly. It's really important. This has been super informative. Thank you for the tips. I'm really thrilled about the one for my glasses, especially. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they look so much better. <laughs> <laughs> now, where can people find you, Kim? Where's the they can find me. I'm Kim Foley on LinkedIn. I'm uh, Kim Foley on YouTube. I am uh, on all social, social media, Kim Foley Video on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and uh, KimFoley.com is where you can download that free etiquette guide, which is very useful. Um, and my book is on Amazon. So you can get the ebook or the print book. Here it is right here. La la la. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Isn't that great? Right. Looks it's got great visuals. So many illustrations in this book, you know, that they're really great. There's the mid-tone colors I was talking about oh, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, um, I wanted to illustrate what I was talking about you know, yeah. in the book, you know, what does headroom mean? How much headroom, you know? So all of these things are there and um, 
it's it's important for me to you know show what I'm what I'm talking about to people. And look, it doesn't seem like we're you know going to be back in offices and back face to face for uh, for some time. So definitely, it's I gonna think, be a while. Yeah, and it's just I think it'll just lift people that you know just add that little bit extra. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's going to be a while, and I think even when we do return to offices, a certain percentage of people will always be working from home. I think that the, the game has changed forever. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't, yeah. I don't think we'll see all yeah. the way that we did. And I think it will be, you know, my, again, I referred to my husband, he was saying the other day, you know, they're going to, in Australia, um, they're going to start, you know, meet, doing small, some small meetings, um, but it's more for sort of planning day or that type of thing, you know, a small get together, not kind of everyday work. So. Yeah. yeah. Terrific. Well, I have really enjoyed this conversation. I hope people have taken away some really good tips and that they really truly implement them. Absolutely. Thank you, Kim, so much for being on the show. I know this is going to be really helpful. And I think people, I, I think sometimes too, you know, you can sort of, your standards can start to drop a little bit. So I think people are going to go, oh, actually, if I did do this or if I did have some better lighting, it would add to my, because it's presence. It's right, all right. Presence. Yeah, perfect. Right. I, I had a guy who's um, uh, uh, an executive coach, and he coaches, you know, really high-level people worldwide, and he said to me, I read your book, and he gave me a quote for the book that said, you know, the first three months of COVID, we were all just trying to figure this out, and we were all, you know, not, not really bringing our personal best to the table, but he said, now... We know we're in this for the long haul. Let's get this right. Let's up our game. Yeah. And I agree. I agree. It's time. Yeah. All right. Terrific. Thank you so much, Kim. Send me the link. I'm happy to um, post it on uh, LinkedIn and